you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Hey, welcome to another great podcast. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here. As well, as always, refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to youtube.com, forward slash Chris Voss. Uh, hit the bell notification button over there. Go to goodreads.com, forward slash Chris Voss. See all the amazing uh, people we're interviewing over there. And all of our big groups on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all the crazy places those kids are playing. We've got some upcoming authors uh, that are going to blow your mind. They've written some amazing new books. Uh, we've got some uh, Wall Street Journal authors that are coming out uh, talking about uh, lawyers and different things and uh, we've got some other folks from i believe the new york times coming on so uh, we're excited to see those and watch for those shows coming up uh today we have an amazing gentleman on the show uh he's from tat global t-a-a-t global michael saxon is on the show with us today he is an accomplished consumer products executive with over 25 years of experience Growing Fortune 100 businesses in the United States, Europe, and Asia, having successfully influenced government policy and led units with a full PL responsibility from US uh, dollars, 100 million to 3 billion dollars while operating in different regulatory systems. His career reflects a demonstrated history of setting record income and market share results in a wide range of market conditions and succeeding in various go-to market models, including wholesale, distributor, and DSD. He brings a strong, innovative mindset from his experience, creating new products and brands, and having been the catalyst for successful large-scale transformation initiatives to drive organic growth and executing M&A transactions to enter new markets. Mr. Saxon served in various positions for 20 years with Altria Group, uh, Philip Morris International, and most recently he ca- helped create Trolley Ventures, a Richmond VA venture capital firm investing in early stage startups. Welcome to the show, Michael. How are you? Good morning, Chris. Doing great. It's awesome to have us. Uh, and give us your title there at uh, TAT Global, if you would. Yes, I'm the CEO of TAC Global and also a member of the board of directors. There you go. There you go. So thanks for coming on the show. Give us your .com so people can find you guys on the interwebs or whatever the dot is. So our corporate website is www.tatglobal.com. That's T-A-A-T-G-L-O-B-A-L.com. And mm-hmm. our branded website is tritat.com. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. So uh, you've, you've done a lot with your business career. Uh, what made you want to start this company? Well, I, you know, I wasn't uh, here from the beginnings. So I've okay. just uh, been on the advisory board for a, a couple of years now. And, uh, and, and I'm kind of the, the company's probably two years into its, uh, its journey. Mm-hmm. Um, but what excited me was was really the latest generation of the product. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I looked at the landscape over my career, Um, And especially if you look at the tobacco landscape in the last 10 years, it's probably experienced more disruption and innovation than it has in its entire history. But all of that innovation is um, bringing the consumer uh, uh, something that they they have to change their 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 behavior and they have to change their experience. And I thought what was really intriguing about the TAC product was, um, you know, it was something that looks and feels and tastes just like their normal experience, but it doesn't have tobacco and it doesn't have nicotine. Um, And I thought that was an intriguing idea. Um, And and that's really what uh, what excited me about the opportunity. So what is the product? Uh, Define it for us uh, that you guys make. Well, we we make something that looks, feels and tastes just like a cigarette, um, but doesn't use tobacco. Um, And as a result, that doesn't contain nicotine. We like to call it beyond tobacco. And uh, it's a product that, uh, while still at its early stages in terms of its footprint across the U.S., but one that uh, uh, is proving to be something that adult smokers uh, do find attractive. 
Mm -hmm. And and so it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the Beyond Meat. Would that be a good comparison? Uh, you know, people that uh, aren't eating meat anymore they they don't want to eat meat. They they have the Beyond Meat. It's kind of faux meat, if you will. Uh, we've we've had that uh, analogy used, um, and and yes, I mean if you think about it from the context that uh, you know our our base material is all plant based material, mm. um, so it, it fits along those analogies. But uh, you know we refer to it as beyond tobacco, and uh, we believe that the uh, adult smoker uh, um, will find this product uh, an attractive product for uh, in, in their in terms of their consumer behavior experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a nicotine and tobacco free smoking experience. That's kind of interesting. Uh, imagine, you know, everybody's doing the beyond this, beyond that thing and trying to find alternatives, but people want to have this, the same sort of experience. Um, this is kind of interesting. How long has the company been developing this sort of technology? It's been approximately two years in development since we've been publicly listed. Um, there's probably been some work uh, our founder did well prior to that, but um, you know, we're on the third generation that we've commercially launched. Um, our early products were, um, uh, I would call very hemp forward. Um, hemp is one of the main ingredients that we do use. Oh yeah. Um, but it was, uh, it was something that really would have attracted a, a hemp smoker, but not necessarily a tobacco smoker. And, and our target market is the adult smoker. We know this is a very, very large, uh, total addressable market. Um, and we wanted to provide adult smokers an alternative that didn't contain nicotine and didn't contain tobacco. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, how many smokers are there still left in America? And I know around the world, there's still a lot. Yeah. The, you know, the number off the top of my head in the U S is somewhere between 20, 25 and 30 million smokers. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the incidence rate is somewhere in the high teens to low 20%, depending on, uh, the late, latest government statistics. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about your background, uh, why you joined TAT, and uh, I understand you were uh, considering retirement when you took the position. Well, I was, uh, you know, I spent 20 plus years uh, at two of the larger tobacco firms. Um, and one of the reasons I stayed as long as I did was in the late 90s when uh, Philip Morris launched the first version of a product they now market as Icos today, and it was called Accord back then. Mm -hmm. It really gave me a chance to have a kind of a peek behind the curtain on what how much R&D was being invested um, in next generation products. Um, and then when I came back to the U.S. in 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 2012 um, was really at the height of kind of the e-cigarette or e-vapor uh, frenzy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you stand back and you take off your your kind of big corporate hat and you look at where innovation in this space um has happened, it's largely been at small entrepreneurs or founders like our founder, Joe. And um, that was one of the things that really intrigued me. Um, you know, Big Tobacco has been spending a lot of money in this space for a long time. But when you look at uh, everything that's been brought to the market successfully in the last 10 years, it's been largely things that was innovated outside of Big Tobacco. Um, mm -hmm. And I was excited to that. And I thought that some of my skill set would be able to add value to the company going forward. That's pretty awesome. So what are some of the benefits for TAT smokers? Uh, what, what do they get from not having a product that doesn't have tobacco and nicotine? Well, you know, they, they get a product that really resembles um, much of what they're used to, right? Um, it, it, you know, if you saw one of our products, it looks, feels, and tastes really like a cigarette. So they, they get to continue that experience that, that uh, they're used to, um, but no longer have that uh, nicotine uh urge or nicotine addiction um, that, that brings them back. So um, we're excited about its potential and uh, the early signs that we have from uh, some of our focus markets are, are pretty promising. Mm -hmm. and, and is that going to compete with, uh, you know, I, we, we've seen the uh, uh, huge emergence of, uh, of these, uh, of the, like the jewel products and things like that. And, and uh, I think, I guess the government has been trying to squash them. Uh, because of the nicotine and stuff that's in their uh, products, I, I believe still. Um, and so there's that huge market of, of people that are taking the vaping. Um, are you trying to compete with that and offer a better alternative product that doesn't have the same sort of stuff that they have in theirs? Well, we know from plenty of other people's studies that overwhelmingly a large percentage, but a large percentage of adult smokers are looking to either quit or switch altogether. Mm -hmm. um, and we think our product can be part of that alternative choice for them. 
Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we're also investing in the science behind our product. Even while we're not regulated by the FDA, um, we think uh, to be a credible uh, stakeholder in this conversation that we've got to have uh, the science to support our product. So we've invested in some early science already and um, and we believe we're on the right track and we're going to be investing more in the months and years ahead um, to continue to uh, validate uh, what our hypothesis is as it relates to this product. Yeah, I imagine it can help people, uh, uh, you know, get, get away from nicotine and, and tobacco smoking. You know, I've had friends that they're so used to that urge and, and the, the oral sort of experience uh, of having a, having a cigarette um it's hard for them to do it and it's big business to to charge people for uh you know to try and get off of nicotine addiction which technically they just give you a pill that gives you nicotine addiction uh, i see that i see the packs that are they now put behind uh plexiglass walls because they're so expensive it's like 40 bucks a pack for nicotine gum or something like that and i'm just like holy crap and um so you know it, it, there's a big market for trying to help people get off of uh nicotine addiction yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, overwhelmingly, uh, you know, I think it's some the last statistics I saw was something like 80 to 90 percent of people have either tried to quit, want to quit, switch to something less less harmful. And it's a it's a, it's a really hard thing for adult smokers to to, to do. Um, and that's why I've always believed that um, there's not going to be one kind of silver bullet that solves this problem. And and. You know, we're not we're not claiming to be that silver bullet either. We're we're saying we're we're, we're one of the products that's out there um, that that can uh, potentially help a, a smoker uh, switch. And, uh, and 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 like you said, there's a, there's a lot of aspects to uh, for adult smokers on smoking that that uh, causes them to continue, right? And part of it's the nicotine, and part of it's some of the other factors that you mentioned. So mm -hmm. we believe our product provides that alternative that doesn't have nicotine. So Hopefully that addictive element um, isn't there anymore for them, um, and it's uh, it's part of their consumer journey on the on the path that they're trying to achieve for themselves. There you go. Uh, so, what markets are you guys currently in right now? Well, currently we're in the U in United States um, and the UK markets. Um, in fact, I just got back from London uh, in Europe last week, where uh, we've just now shipped our fourth order. Um, and I was meeting with our distributors uh, and partners there in the UK, and uh, we're really encouraged by that sign. Um, and to the you, you, in terms of the United States, we're we're spread out a little bit, um, but we've now since I've joined about three months ago, um, we've really uh, worked with a company called IRI that's helped us analyze the U.S. market um, and determine what states are priority for us. And uh, in the last three months, we've really been focused here in our home market in Las Vegas of really trying to combine our sales and marketing efforts geographically. And uh, we're really intrigued by the results we're already getting. And only we're only two to three months in this. Uh, one of our uh, partner accounts out here in Vegas is called Speedy Mart. Um, and they saw triple digit growth rates from August versus July, mm -hmm. um, which shows that we're not only getting the awareness of our product, we're getting people to try it and getting people to make that permanent switch to our product um, through the repeat sales. So. We're excited by that early case study and uh, and look forward to taking that case study to uh, other chains and other states across the United States. There you go. Speedy Marts are big in Vegas. I've lived in Vegas for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, so is it, uh, are, where are your manufacturing plants? And I guess, is this an American made product? Absolutely. We like to use the hashtag Vegas born. Um, not only our headquarters out here, but that's where our primary manufacturing facility is. Um, and we're, we're, we're proudly Vegas born and, um, and look to, uh, continue, uh, that going forward. That's awesome, man. Awesome. Uh, so what are your goals for TAT? Well, you know, in, in the near term, it's really for us to, um, refine the sales and marketing approach on a geographic level and then build the, build the, uh, company's infrastructure to scale that across the U S right. Um, you know, uh, I, I have a modest goal that uh, for us to be successful, we'd be 1% or the equivalent 1% of the, of the adult cigarette market. Um, and if we achieve that, it'll be a great milestone for us in our corporate history. So I always take the logic, you got to get one before you can get two. Yeah. Um, so our near term goal is to try and achieve 1% of the equivalent cigarette market. And, and uh, again, that's a, a modest goal, but still an aggressive one. 
And uh, we, we like the what we're starting to see here in Las Vegas and uh, excited to take that story across the U.S. There you go. Uh, so uh, how is TAT and its product fall in line with the FDA and helping smokers? I mean, does, do you still have to put the warning label on the on the package or how does that work? Well, we're not regulated by the FDA. Um, mm-hmm. That said, there's plenty of scar tissue that's either current or history um, that we're making sure we avoid. So we, we put health warnings on the pot, pro, on our packs and our, and our advertising materials voluntarily. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're also, like I said earlier, investing in the science so that we can uh, inform consumers exactly uh, the impact that the product can have on them. Um, but for, for the moment, well, we're outside of the FDA's jurisdiction. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, we, we very much intend to market this product responsibly. Um, and only to adults. That's something that's very important to us. Um, and uh, some of the things I put in place since arriving uh, helps ensure that. There you go. Uh, what about the price point? Uh, what What's the price point in this? Because I know traditional cigarettes are, uh, I mean, they're astounding and high. In Vegas, they open shops just to sell cigarettes because there's, I, I, I assume there's so much market, but I assume that's why they started so many of them. Right. There's a, and, and that's the price is an interesting part of our story. Not only is uh, price attractive from a consumer point of view. Mm. Um, if I take most recently, we've launched in the state of Texas uh, and our price point there is five dollars. Oh, wow. Um, and, and most of the branded discounts are not only branded discounts, but your leading brands are well above that. Um, so it's an attractive price point for the consumer. Um, but what's also really uh important for us is that it's it's attractive for our trade partners. Mm-hmm. Um, while cigarettes are still a really large category from a margin point of view, it's it's a it's a it's one of the categories they make the least amount of margin. And with our product, um, retailers can uh, uh, find that our margins are, are substantially more attractive. And hopefully that helps us as we scale that uh, when uh, major retailers across the U.S. Uh, see our product, um, not only see uh, the product itself, but see its impact that it's having in some of the some of their their uh, uh, peer group companies in other states that they'll be like, wow, this is a really interesting product that really, truly is an alternative for the adult smoker. And uh, and, and, you know, they'll list it as well. So um, we're pretty excited right now. We've uh, launched up with a major retailer out in uh, Texas uh, this month called Bucky's, which is a pretty iconic brand in the state of Texas. Um, we're also a distributed in uh, West Virginia in an account called Parmar. So we're, we're really excited about these early results and uh, excited for our upcoming uh, NAX show here in Vegas, where uh, all the major retailers from across the U.S. will be here in our home market, Las Vegas. There you go. Uh, someone in our audience is asking, uh, what about Switzerland? Are you in Switzerland yet, I guess? We are not in Switzerland, but, uh, you know, I was in Europe uh, last week and um, I'm one of the other things being newly in this chair is I'm really intrigued by the uh, international uh, inbound offers we're receiving. Um, but as a small company, we have to focus. Um, so we're looking at each of those uh, opportunities uh, on a standalone basis. And if uh, there's a right fit for us where we have the right partner that uh, can really support the company uh, as it launches into a country, then uh, we absolutely uh, take advantage of those opportunities. There you go. And I imagine, you know, there's, they're constantly doing legislation to ban uh, menthol. And uh, I believe, I believe they banned menthol recently, or they tried to, I don't know where it is in the courts, but, uh, and, and regulate uh, nicotine and tobacco harder. That, that gives you kind of more of a future edge, don't, wouldn't you say? Well, you know, like I said, we fall outside of the FDA's jurisdiction, but we're at the same time, we're investing in the science um, behind our product so that, you know, if there was ever a point in time where we had to meet with uh, members of public health or, or, or members uh, within a regulatory body, because, you know, the United States is just one market. There's other bodies out there. And that's one of the reasons uh, we're excited about the UK market. The UK market has been one of the countries where their public health officials have been um, very bullish on alternatives uh, mm-hmm. for the adult tobacco s- smoker. And we think some of the science that we're now gathering on our product um, will be very intriguing. And, uh, and that's one of the other reasons the UK market is also very important for us. Yeah, this is, should be pretty interesting. Uh, you know, I mean, the more alternatives people can have, you know, I, I've had Beyond Meat uh, and uh, I've done veganism, uh, veganism. So there's there's like 50 different flavors of veganism. So you have to be careful, which I just call it veganism. 
so uh it's not full veganism but i've had the beyond meat experience uh and yeah it's it's a lot different better and uh you know anything that might be more healthier for you than some of the alternatives that are out there definitely make a difference you run a lot of companies and and uh built a lot of things um what what are some uh things that you use when i say you know leadership and leading companies what are some different uh, books that maybe you've read or things that have inspired you or leadership styles that you use that find you find work for you well, I, you know, I really had a, a, a terrific mentor, um, the gentleman that hired me to come up to the company. Uh, his name was John Clary, and uh, he was really instrumental in my career. And, and he had a funny phrase, and this is probably a slightly older school kind of, uh, you know, showing my age here a little bit. But, you know, his kind of view was, well, the higher up you get and get in the food chain, the less actual work you do. And he wasn't necessarily meaning you don't don't work very hard, but you're you know, your guiding work, your, your directing work, your, your influencing work. And what, it, what that inspired in me was this phrase that I had another mentor say one time, which was love your people and they'll love you back. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, I think the key thing is people really want to know where they stand. And I think uh, over the course of my career, uh, I, 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 I find a lot of joy in the fact that many people around the globe that don't necessarily work for me today still consider me a mentor. So, um, you know, that, that makes me really proud. And, and one of the books I read most recently was a book called simple. Hmm. And, uh, it really talked about, it was started off in the, in the essences of, of around how to write, um, and how to make things more simple. And in fact, the first couple pages are about the length of a credit card contract when you sign it and, and, and how this person's journey was to get it on one page. Um, but I thought that what's inspired me about this work is that at, at the end of the day, um, many times in life, and especially in business, we overcomplicate things. Um, and if you can boil, uh, boil things down to really what the simplest way to do things, uh, uh, it really makes life a lot easier, especially for larger organizations. Definitely, definitely. That's been pretty interesting. So as, as we go out, I've got a question that's popping up. Uh, uh, it, this is, I think you've already answered this question. Is, is the plan uh, to move to other countries, uh, any other country in Europe? I think you kind of answered that one. We covered that, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, we got some questions that are being thrown at us here. Uh, is, uh, have you are you guys going to uplist to the Nasdaq or uh, any other or TXS in Canada? Any plans to do that? We're evaluating uh, all of those um, right as we speak, um, and when the when the right opportunity and, and the market conditions fit us, uh, we, we absolutely would love at a future point in time to be on a uh, more major exchange. Of course. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole goal is to move up there and get public funding and all that good stuff. So uh, thanks to my audience for those questions. So we really appreciate them. Uh, as we go out, what do you want people to know about TAT and uh, what, what do you want to leave them with? Well, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, a, we're a young company, um, but one that has really high ambitions. And, uh, and we're already starting to see those ambitions realized in a few markets here in the U.S. and one market overseas. Uh, so we're excited to uh, stay on this journey. Um, I'd ask people to stay in contact with us by registering on our website at tacglobal.com. Um, and they'll hear the, the most recent uh, announcements we make. And uh, we'll be having hosting, in fact, our first earnings call uh, tomorrow, Wednesday afternoon at 430. So if uh, folks would like to know a little bit more, uh, please join. There you go. I'm getting some messages that people are looking forward to seeing that. Uh, it's been wonderful to have on the show, Michael. Thank you very much for coming on. Give us the dot com so people can uh, find out more on the interwebs there. Yeah, Chris, thanks again for hosting us. And people can find us at www. Uh, tatglobal.com. That's T A A T G L O B A L.com. There you and thanks go. again, Chris, for having us on. Thank you, Michael. We certainly appreciate having on, and, and I love your insights to leadership and what you're doing, man. Uh, you're just rocking it. So, uh, thanks, Manus, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Voss. Go to youtube.com, Fortress Chris Voss. See our big 130,000 group on LinkedIn. Follow that and our LinkedIn newsletter that you'll probably be seeing this on in the next few days. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys.